Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to get you started with the NeJ3 mobile application to control your NeJ3 machine. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, on today's video I'm going to concentrate on the Android application and the application that I'm about to show you will basically uh, control all of the newest machine from NeJ from the third generation. So this will include the NeJ3, the NeJ3 uh, Plus, the 3 Pro which is this one and the NeJ3 Max. And so let's get into the actual steps. So first thing first we'll need to give power to our machine and to uh, turn it on. So simply plug in the power jack here, wait for it to initialize and we are good to go. Now, since we are going for an offline control, that means we are going to control the machine through our smartphone and not through a computer, there won't be any need for a USB cable into the main board. So if you have it in, leave it in, but there is no need for it. Once you're done with that, it is time to go ahead and download the uh, uh, application. Now, if you have a phone that supports Google services, uh, including the Google Play Store, like in my case, I got a Samsung, and so I have all of the Google services here, you will simply need to go ahead onto the Play Store. You will type Nijet3 into the search bar, search and that's going to be the first application that will come out and so then you will click on install and this will uh, follow a typical installation process automatically and then will launch the application for you however uh, if you have a phone which is not supported by google so you don't get the google play store or google services whatsoever we'll need to go ahead and download the apk file from the Nege uh, wiki site and then to install it and so to do that open your browser whichever you want go over to Nege wiki I'll put the link in the description below now here let's go to the uh, hamburger menu select our machine Nege 3 Pro and here we can use this index with links on a J app for Android and we are straight there. So once again here, it gives you the option to download um, from the Google Play Store, which in my case will basically open up the application. Um, however, we are interested to the APK file and so you will click the link and this will automatically download the file for you. Now, since I've gotten the file already in my device, although it is not installed, it's prompting me to download it again. But in my case, I just click on to the link and this will prompt me to, uh, well, install the application. Now, this is the story. Uh, a phone, the phone will most likely prompt you or warn you that um, the application might be not trusted. And so you will basically need to grant the permission uh, through the settings in order to be able to install third party applications like this APK extension. And so now, in my Samsung phone, as you can see, it's uh, pretty easy. You will simply uh, follow here, click on settings, and then um, it will basically ask you to enable or give the permission to install APK files downloaded from the specific application. In this case, it's my Edge browser. And so once I'm done with that, as you can see, I get the prompt for the installation. And so now I can click on install. However, um, if your phone works differently, uh, you will basically need to work that out uh, through the settings. Uh, most likely will be under some security settings. And then there you will need to look for um, like allow third party application or AP APKs or different sources or something like this, unknown apps. There will be some kind of term like that. And so you will basically need to um, enable it okay so once you're done as you can see we can open it now if it doesn't come over here you will need to look for the application on your phone in my case it's readily available here you will need to give a bunch of permissions so let's go ahead and do that 
only while using the app. Okay. Now this will basically scan for the available devices and as you can see it got connected. So you will see that the machine first homes, okay? And now um, in this new series of machine there is something called the parking mode. So you can basically set up a location where you want the laser module to be stationary at all time while the machine is connected. And so in my case I've decided to be uh, the center and as you can see that's where the machine went back so uh, straight after homing it's going into parking position all right now again same story as per the desktop application it is a very primitive one but it's also quite simple and straightforward to use so here you can basically go ahead and click on load image now you are presented again with this uh, large array of images which are available from the jet Again, it's unsortable, so you will basically need to go, it's easy, and select the one that you want when it's loading. Seems like loading very slowly, okay? Um, then you have the favorites, if you had some of those pictures into favorites. Um, then you have the option to write some text and also to do drawings. So you can click on draw, you can draw with your finger, okay? Um, Let's go back, then you can uh, click on text, you can add some text here, Nudge. okay, Let's see where is the text, there we go, give it apply, and once you are happy with that, you can simply give on save, uh, you will have a couple of uh, effects to choose from, well in this case as you can see they are equal, so whichever I choose makes no difference, and as you can see the text is now loaded, okay. Um, however, uh, what I think that most of you will want to do uh, with the offline controllers is to be able to load uh, an image from the gallery and to work that out for your phone. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you now. So load image. Now as you can see we have the option to actually take a picture over here. Okay, so I can take a picture of something and then I can go straight ahead and engrave. Well, this is, I don't think that that's something that you would normally want to do straight after taking a picture and so let's go back again and what I will do I will basically go into the gallery and here I will go and select my um, picture the one that I want to engrave okay let me see there we go I want to engrave this uh, motor now here you can uh, crop if you want to you can uh, change the ratio and you can also rotate I mean very simple editing stuff and once you're happy with that you can uh, click on the check mark there all right so now this will basically load the image here you can set the size if you want to so let's say for example to set the height to 80 millimeter and give ok and now I will go ahead now this is something that I've noticed with this version uh, it says that the image is too large so you cannot set image beyond 100 millimeters squared in dimension I'm not sure why that is but this is the way it is right now and so okay I'll accept that so I'll set the width back to a thousand to a hundred millimeter give okay okay this will resize and hopefully I should get it right yeah so this is all now now here again you can make some sketch you can add some text if you want to I'm not going to do that I'll just give on save a couple of effects will once again be generated uh, I'll go for the bottom one which seems to be uh, the best looking one click OK and now once you're ready with it you can basically preview and you can see that this is going to outline where the project is going to come out okay now if you're not happy with it you can basically drag it and move it wherever you want when you drop you will basically see that this is going to uh, reframe it on the new location so if you are happy with that you can stop the preview and now um, you can set your carving time which in the desktop application is called burning time so I want to be quite fast since it is 
an, uh, a picture, okay? Usually you will want to engrave pictures fast. Also bear in mind the material that you're using. Uh, right now I'm using uh, a sheet of HDF, which is high density fiber. Um, and uh, so uh, you, will, you will want to go fast and with a reasonable power. So I think that I will go with a, maybe like maximum 40%. I think that's good enough for this uh, purpose. Um, and so once you're happy with everything, you can go ahead and to click on start. This will load everything and we'll start engraving. All right, now, um, as you can see in this application, we also have the time elapsed. However, unfortunately, it doesn't give any hint about the percentage or, or how long it's left to go. And so, yeah, we'll just need to wait for it to finish. Um, all right, so now I will leave the machine to work, to engrave. I'll fast forward a little bit and then we will see what is the result. A few hours later, our engraving is done. Now, let's take it out and let's have a quick look on how it looks like. I think it's uh, decent, okay? Uh, maybe adjusting the contrast would have helped a little bit here and the brightness perhaps. Um, yeah, I think that uh, it is okay for like to get started, but I think that other software could have done the job much better. And now this comes to the limitation of their um, desktop application and also mobile application, which as you can see is pretty much uh, the same in functionalities. So the thing here is that first thing first, you only have the effects, okay, or algorithms that the software provides automatically. So you cannot choose any kind of other effects like Jarvis or Dietring or some kind of grayscale to use the uh, power modulation of the laser module. So you will need to stuck with whichever of the two filters or effects you find uh, suitable. The other thing is that there is no option to adjust the brightness and the contrast. And as I said, I believe that adjusting a little bit the brightness and the contrast would have made the motor stand out a little bit more from the background. And the other thing is also that you can't choose what's the line interval or um, how many lines per millimeter you should get, okay? So that means if you figure this out, like a printer, you know, you saw this working. So every what interval, like 0 0.01, uh, sorry, 0 0.1 millimeter, you get another line of engraving. So the machine is going to default on its uh, maximum resolution, uh, which is, if I don't remember wrong, was uh, 300, 390 DPI, something like that. And that means that the line will be approximately 0 0.075 millimeters, okay? Now, bear in mind that with most machines, I usually use uh, like the minimum is uh, 0 0.08, okay? But in average, I'm going with 0 0.1 or 0 0.12 millimeters, and I get a pretty decent 
uh, result. That will also depend obviously from the spot size, but you got the idea. I mean, there is no need to go that precise. And so because of this, basically the machine took an enormous amount of time. In fact, I ended up stopping the video recording, just left it. It stood like, I think three and a half hours for this small engraving, which is crazy. And so, yeah, I mean, it's also the other thing is that because um, Nijay uses this different uh, approach with their software only, uh, of the, which is called burning time or carving time, which as I said in my previous video, it's basically the reverse of the speed, you have a speed limitation, okay? Now, you would be limited with other machines too, uh, but that would be like the limitation of the computational power given by the processor. In this case, it is given by the fact that having the reverse of the speed, once you reach one millisecond of burning time, I mean, you can go faster than that. And the machine, sure enough, can go faster. In fact, you will see when we set up the machine with uh, other GRBL controlling softwares like um, uh, Laser GRBL and Light Barn, you'll see that the machine goes way faster than that. But also you will notice that uh, the engraving behavior is completely different. And that's because, as I anticipated in my previous video, Nijay uses a proprietary um, yes, software, but it's using a proprietary algorithm or let's say method of engraving, which is different from uh, the industry standard. All right. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, click the thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now.